Harbaugh facing new challenges on multiple fronts. It's clear President Trump's problems aren't going away anywhere. In fact, they're adding up. As we're seeing, there are innumerable worries right now that threaten to consume his whole presidency. Most recently, there are the tape recordings made by former staffer Omarosa, with a promise of more tapes to come. There's the looming prospect of a damaging report from the special counsel, not to mention the legal wrangling over Trump's testimony and a potential subpoena, especially over the issue of obstruction. Then there's the trial of Paul Manafort, which could conclude in a matter of days. Then there's the unpredictability surrounding Michael Cohen. What's he got to say? Who could spill easily more of the president's secrets. Then there's the already cooperating, those already cooperating in the Russian probe, including Michael Flynn, who's already talking. He's already told prosecutors what they know now. Last but not least, there's the growing possibility that the president's own son, Donald Trump Jr., could be in serious criminal jeopardy in connection with the Trump Tower meeting. All these concerns, in addition to actually catch this being president of the United States on the side of all this stuff, it could explain why we so often see the president lashing out on Twitter like we did today. Among his many tweets, he again called for an end to the Russian probe, of course, referring to fired FBI agent Peter Strzok. He said, Strzok started the illegal rigged witch hunt. Why is this so-called probe ended immediately? But given all that's transpired, who's left to believe him? Trump, that is. A new CNN poll released today shows a majority of Americans, 56 percent, say the president's public statements about the Russian probe are mostly or completely false. 56 percent. Joining me now is Jill Weinbanks, former assistant special prosecutor during Watergate, and Ken Vogel, political reporter with The New York Times. Jill, I don't know if you're as old as I am, but I will ask you, do you remember that song Jackson Brown wrote the lyrics, seven, William on my, will, seven women on my mind? It's like, it's like if I'm Trump, I'm worried about all these possible witnesses, including his own words that will be used against him. His son could go to the calaboose. He's got Flynn out there talking. He's got Manafort maybe going to talk. He's got certainly Michael Cohen talking already. It's just seemed like there's so many people. And of course, Amarosa with tapes. She's got piles of tapes, she says now, in her closet somewhere, ready to play for us the next couple of weeks. How does a guy like that, a defendant basically, keep his mind if he has one? Well, I think the answer is he doesn't have one and that he's delusional. I think he really does almost believe what he says because his he's lies, completely innocent. He has nothing to fear from any of these people. It, it, it's the only explanation because the things that he say says are so easily disproved that if you weren't delusional, you wouldn't say them. A liar always says something that there's some way of proving is true or some way you could make people believe it. And now when 56 percent do not believe him, I'm shocked that it's even 40 some percent that do. No one should believe him because it's right in front of us. The obstruction is in front of us. It's in plain sight. The collusion, which is not collusion, it is conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to violate our election mm -hmm. laws. Those are things that are crimes being committed in our face. And when he says stop the investigation in a tweet, and by the way, speaking of tweets, I consider it an insult to dogs to have used that reference because oh. I'm a big dog lover. OK, <laughs> let me go. To, let me go to Ken on this. Uh, it seems to me you've got a lot of potential witnesses and, and active witnesses. You've got people, all of whom, starting with Manafort and Flynn, talk to him and Cohen as well. And I think Amorosa, probably on the further outskirts, all heard him talking for all those months they work with him. You work for a boss. I've been in politics. You hear them talk. They don't hide in the corner and talk. They're talking all the time like Popeye. Talk, bup, 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 bup. They're talking, what are we going to do with the Russians? What can we do with the Russians? What are we going to do with the Russians? And all this conversation, he must be afraid that he said something that all of them, or all of them at each individual, put a high level together, have a hell of a pile of witnessing to do against him. Your thoughts, starting with Amorosa, his inbox right now. Yeah. I mean, he feels a great existential threat. I don't think there's any question to his presidency. But even more acutely, what he feels are sort of three areas where his sensitivities are being inflamed. Number one is that someone is making money off him. That's what really bothers him. Amorosa is out there hawking a book and she's making money off him. He yeah. also really doesn't like when people talk, when people are disloyal to him. Here you have 
three folks, met more than that, who he thinks he made. He thinks he made Amarosa. Who's he loyal and, to? You know, maybe he did. Who's he loyal to? Well, that's a good question. I mean, that's the point. These people are all preparing for him to flip on them, even as yeah. he expects them to continue to be loyal to him. And so, but that really bothers him when they come out, someone who he sort of built up and feels like he made their career, comes out and says something disparaging about him. You have that with Michael Cohen. You have that with Amarosa. Uh, you, you have that even to some extent with Paul Manafort. For it. Uh, and then additionally, he also feels like, uh, you know, these people are uh, giving Mueller something that, that would allow him to sort of better make this case. And, and this case being, in his mind, that he somehow doesn't deserve credit for the presidency, for winning the presidency. That's really the underlying thing here that bothers him, that somehow the Russians were involved in tipping the election to him, even though yeah, there has been no allegation in Mueller's investigation. That's what bothers him about the whole specter of Russia hanging over his presidency. Uh, here we are wearing the same tie. Anyway, as Omarosa <laughs> has confirmed that she has spoken to Robert Mueller's prosecutors, and she alleged that during the campaign, Trump had prior knowledge of the hacked emails before they were released to the public. So he's like Roger Stone, who also intimated he knew it was time for Podesta's time in the barrel. Let's watch that again. Did Donald Trump know about those emails before they came out? Absolutely. He knew about them? Yes. He knew what was coming out before WikiLeaks yes. released them? Well, she didn't provide any evidence that to back that allegation. NBC News reported in February that Mueller has been intent on finding out whether Trump knew about those hacked emails before they were released. Uh, let me get back to Jill on this. She has been called as a witness. It came out last night in passing at the end of our interview last night. Amarosa pointed out he may ask me, call me again. So we have evidence already that Mueller thinks she's got something, something worth getting testimony from and probably go back to her again, right? Absolutely. And there's no question that if he knew what was on those tapes and if he knew that they were hacked by the Russians, that is the end of the case against him. That is unbelievable evidence. So I hope that she has proof of that or that Mueller has gotten the proof of it. Uh, he is getting desperate. That is Trump. He's actually taken out against his son now when he says, to the best of my knowledge, he's throwing his son under the bus. So he is mm. really getting desperate. And I think he's really worried about all of the very many witnesses. He said he would bring the best to the government. And he has brought people who reflect his own values, which are none. And they're all yeah. birds of a feathers flocking together. And we need to really take a hard look at what we're going to find out. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.